So let's take a look at this week in review. Uh, I really um, uh, want to start with the Memorial Day week. On Memorial Day itself, um, I really did a nice photo collage of different long wings. A uh, number of the four uh, shoe form groups um, talked about long wings as being something to commemorate what the soldiers would have worn um, had they uh, returned from our, our big wars. And uh, so I thought it was a, an interesting way of looking at it and so showcased uh, different long wings from different places around the world. Then as we uh, look at uh, some of the others, I had my VAS shoes, uh, both my, my wingtip and my splitto. Uh, then a Heinrich Dinklocker, both, all three made in Budapest. And then my St. Crispin's from Romania uh, really tied out the Eastern Europe um, uh, piece. And then as we look at soles, really interesting soles here. This is a patinaed sole on a pair of VAS, um, which is uh, just really cool the way it's kind of wearing in. Uh, then I've got the, the big honkin' JR soles with all the brass nails. Uh, then this is another JR sole uh, from Vass. Um, and then the uh, St. Crispin soles are really, really interesting. This one with a pegged sole. Uh, this one with a really, really thick 10 millimeter sole. Um, and then a couple of toe shots just for good measure, uh, looking at different things, uh, both on the nails as well as the toe plates. And uh, really love the way the toe plates and the uh, nails protect the, the toe of the shoe and add a lot of life uh, to the sole overall. Welcome back. We're going to talk a little bit about general shoe knowledge and we're going to start with Corthe. Uh, during my unboxing video for Corthe, I talked about it sounding like it's hand welted based on the ad. Uh, I've since gone to their website and onto a, a video that uh, showed their factory tour, and you can see them actually uh, gluing, and then in this case, sewing uh, the gemming, which is a piece of canvas, onto the insole for the shoe. So now let's talk about shoe polish. It's always a question, how, where do you polish the shoe? Um, how much do you put on the upper? How much do you put on the toe? What is a good shine going to look like? And this is an example of where I think that it makes sense having a high shine or higher shine on the toe and not on the upper. So as you look at the higher end shoes, I think this is a really good illustration of take a look at the angles in which the laces are set here. You can see how each uh, lace line actually goes out a little bit um, from, from the center. So the, the upper of the shoe, the top part where the facing is, is actually kind of angled out. This is one of the unique things on high-end shoes that make them so much more comfortable is that this asymmetry, this pulling out, is more like your feet. So welcome back. Today we're going to look at an update for this shoe. This is a St. Crispin's Mod 646. Uh, it is a hole cut Adelaide uh, with this beautiful stitching, hand stitching, for the U-throat, the peaked cap, and the heel. All right. They did a really nice job with uh, what Acme calls a half Norwegian. All right. Toe plates, they have a pegged sole or waist here. So very narrow. It's a, it's a really wonderful feel on the shoe. Uh, very solid feel. This is Russian calf leather in a cognac color, uh, which I find to be just really, really uh, a joy to wear. Um, this is the first shoe that I had made on a custom last for me. And, um, you know, one of, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, I like the beach is a last. Now, when um, that's this angle here, they just did a really nice job with it. And, um, you know, they, they just, I find that it was a, uh, just a really classy uh, look, but a very aggressive last, which, um, especially with this rise right here and, and the rises on the side. Um, so something a little different, but a, uh, just a really strong, look for an outstanding high-end shoe now if you look at uh you know wear over the last year i haven't had the chance to wear them as often as i'd like um <laughs> too many shoes but um 
they're extremely comfortable. Uh, they uh, they seem to be lasting really well. One of the things I love about them is that the um, they they really when they hand lasted this, they really got the outside top line a lot lower than the inner top line, and that to me uh, drives a lot of the comfort on this, so that it just feels wonderful to wear. So uh, great shoe, and uh, you know one of the pride and joys of my collection. All right, an update on another St. Crispin's shoe. Uh, this is uh, on the same um, same last shape for my foot, but they actually, instead of the chisel last that they had on the, on the, the last shoe, this is a rounded last. They call this the classic. Uh, so this is your more traditional last for a, um, a split toe or an Adelaide, and um, just a really well done shoe. Now, I had the butt stitch done here, which is really apparent just because of the, the change in pattern that they did on the leather. And what I love about this leather, this is bison, is the, the bison at St. Crispin's is so unique, has such great patterning in it. And you can see what they did by putting this large pattern on the inside and the small pattern on the outside. It really provides this really cool textural effect so that when you're walking, you see the inside of one foot, the outside of another, and it's just really cool. You know, the stitch for the, the apron, also very unique, kind of has this little point here, which is very cool. Very unique, has a very unique shoe in my collection. Single top line with the seam here. And that seam looks like it could be like on an austerity brogue. It is so fine. Just really, really great shoe. Look how well it was clicked. There's no seam on the back there. And it's able to keep this shape here as well as that shape there. And I mean, this stitch here is so fine. If it wasn't for the pattern, you wouldn't see it at all. Just super exciting. You know, this isn't one that I put a high shine on yet. Um, I think maybe uh, my next step will be to, to do that. But uh, also did the 360, you know, half Norwegian on this. And this super, super thick sole. When I first looked at this, I thought this might actually be a single piece of leather, but it is too. It's just so well finished, it's hard to see it. If I get the angle just right, you can see that there are two different sole it's in there. And uh, they just did a really nice job. Look at that heel stack. Again, they did a really, really nice job. So nails, of course, my initials, integrated plate, everything classic, well-constructed, and a beautiful shoe. Now, on this pair of St. Crispin's, I got the hollowed tree, which, uh, you know, they kind of uh, upsold me on. Look at that. You know? Not many of my shoe trees are pieces of art in and of themselves. And this one really is just very, very cool, very nice work and uh, something I'm really excited about. So thanks for tuning in. So let's take a look at what's going on in the pipeline. First, I have a really cool shoe that is in process, about to be uh, uh, patinaed um, from Bashia in Indonesia. Really looking forward to that. And then I've made some really good strides on um, my hole cuts and um, a next step from Acme, which I'm really looking forward to, as well as a new Paulo Scafora uh, to add an Adelaide to that collection. And as I look at the rest of Q2, my primary focus is going to be my next shoe with Macariello, uh, looking at a custom last. And then I've got a few things on the plate for Q3, including a St. Crispin's hole cut, which I um, definitely want to do.